<coughs> okay, first assignment. I said we had no homework. I lied. Okay, on the on the ba on the front here, and this is because there's often um, there's always one or two parents that email me and say, "Why do my, why does my child have all these zeros? I don't know what's going on in your class. How can I help?" Blah 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 blah. Hopefully, this will help your parents understand this. Okay, so I want you to take this home and have them read through this first page. You might have them leaf through the different pages, and um, this these are your next 46 assignments. Okay, we're going to be working on this for weeks. All right, um, one of the things um, is all information taken during the notes period needs to be in your graphic organizer or in your book. Um, we will start taking notes on probably on Wednesday next week. And I'm going to sneeze. Or not. Okay. Then um, another thing I want your parents to know is that all assignments can be reworked or done over. Um, so, and then I will assess them again. There is no penalty for redoing an assignment. Um, because my reasoning is the more you, if you redo it, you're going to learn something, it's going to improve, and so therefore the, the, your grade should reflect that. Um, number three, scores are recorded every 10 assignments. Number four, there's no penalty for late assignments, uh, but if your work is not completed, a zero will go into power school until completed. One of the things that throws people off in this class is that due dates are like weeks you know, you don't have an assignment for like a week or two, um, although this assignment is due on Monday. So I'll put this right into the grade book. So if you forget to show this to your parents and have them sign it, um, then you will get a zero until you get your parents' signature. If you forge your parents' signature, that's fine. But if your parent contacts me and says, I don't know what's going on, then what I say is, didn't you see the packet? All right, and they'll say no. And I said, well, I have the pat, you know, I have your signature here on the packet, so the, you should have it. So um, please show it to your parents. Your parents are your friends. They will help you be successful in school. They will help me be successful as a teacher. Um, and then you can come in during early session. I want your parents to know that. Um, you can get a pass and come in during study hall. I want your parents to know that. Materials can be checked out to take home to do your assignments because a lot of students tell their parents, but I can't work on it because the materials are all in school. I want them to know that. Um, and then this is one of the things we're going to do, select a subject today. Here is the class website where all the information is. I haven't done the calendar yet. I'll get there one of these days. Um, the list of assignments for the design journal. All of this will be on there. I've updated it. I don't know. I've got to maybe change the link. The old one might be up, but I will change the link. Note to self of things to do. And there are YouTube videos. Like right now, I am making a YouTube video. So I will convert this. It'll go, I'll upload it to YouTube, and then I'll link it to the site. And so, yes, you're famous. Examples of password. So down here it says my child has shown me this packet and has explained the expectations of this class. I know I can call Ms. Zamolik and, or email her if I have questions. Oh, I forgot to put my email on there. Oh, well, they know how to do that through the website. Okay, then the rest of the, for, the packet, these are single, this is the original copy, so they're single pages. But on one side is how I'm going to assess. So the first thing I'm going to assess, and you guys are pretty used to formative assessment scales, right? Uh, because they're, we're, we, all of the teachers have to do this now, so I assume you understand this. So the first assignment today we're going to be focusing on is the cover for your book. To get a four, you have designs, oops, there's a typo, on both the front and the back of your book that is original and you have great craftsmanship. That's a four. You can get a four, you get a 3.5, you can get a 2.75, whatever you can get different areas. 
Proficient means you have included all of the required information. Now, what is the required information? When you flip this assessment over, what you see is, um, and those of you that don't have one, if you want to move so you can look at on somebody else's, you can do that. You'll see a correlation. Here are the assignments. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. They're not great detail here but they're just a really quick reminder of what the assignment is. So what are the requirements for the cover? You must have your first and last name and block number on the outside of the front cover. If you don't have that, you can't get a four or a three or a two. All right, that's a one. So you need, at the very least, you need to do that. Um, and so a two is you've completed your cover. Um, another typo. There's my student teacher re, uh, uh, worked on this, but there's always typos. There is not much. That's because we don't have enough time. Not not much evidence that you've put much thought and careful craftsmanship into the design of your book. That should say cover. And then number one, you are missing either your first and last name and or block number on the front cover, okay? So um, as soon as you get your cover done, I will grade it. And, and if you get a, a, a creepy hand and put it on your desk and you say, could you grade my first assignment or assess my first assignment, I, will, I can put the number in right away. But there will be a due date. I haven't established that yet. I have to do the calendar but there will be a date at which all 10 need to be done and um, that's when I will add up the score and the, the scale is down here, right here. So a four is an A plus. Don't expect fours on all your work, all right? Um, three point, uh, you might get a 3.75, it's exceptional, 3.5. Is that's a 95. A three point is an A, a three is an A minus. So that's a high score. 2.75, 85, 2.5, 80, 2.25, 75, 2, 7. Okay. So that that kind of explains the packet. So every 10 assignments there is, so that's the first, that's the second page. And then the third page is 11 through 20 with the assignments on the back. Next page is 21 through 30 with the assignments in the back. 31 through 40, assignments on the back. Some of these will take more time. Some of them will be fairly quick. Assignments on the back. Okay, so What we're going to do is we're going to give you some covers and you can share one with somebody and these are covers from different art books which I got. I'm just going to randomly hand them out. Look at them with, look at them with a partner and kind of analyze them and see what, what you like. Is it a good cover? Is it boring? Is it exciting? Is it just plain wish to cover or is that cover? Okay, so uh, um, cover serve a couple functions. What does a cover do? Why is there a cover on a book? To show you the title. What else? To help sell the book. Okay, so yes, what else? To put something on the front to draw attention to it. To draw attention so somebody will buy it or read it, yes. Maybe give you an idea of what's inside. Okay, give you an idea of what's inside. All right, so then that's all art, right? Who designs book covers? artists. Do authors design their covers? Rarely. It's done by an artist. So 
that is a that's one of your first examples of where art isn't just a picture on the wall. Art is used to um, sell things, and that's what commercial art is, and that's what um, graphic design is. It's it's to encourage people to consume certain products. So um, you could have a job as a book cover designer. Um, what's the practical reason for a cover? There's a, a practical utilitarian reason, yes. Um, to keep it safe from getting damaged, the book. Right, to keep it safe from getting damaged and therefore um, hardcover books are going to protect the pages more than paperback. I am old enough to remember when there were not paperback books. The first paperback book I bought was 35 cents. So, and it was like I was about in high school when paperback books came out. So it was in the 60s um, when paperback books came. Now, let's look at this cover that this person designed. In terms of um, durability, what do you think? Can you see it? I, I can see it in the computer, but I don't know what you're seeing it's there. Somewhere. Let me turn off the lights so you can see it a little bit better. Then I'm going to have to change the lighting on the stupid thing, but that's okay. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Ladybug is blind. Yeah. Stupid technology. All right, Ladybug. Did you name it? Um, it no, actually, it's called a Ladybug. Oh. It's kind of cute. You see the ladybug there? There's no name in it. It's a little ladybug. All right, now I don't see anything. Oh, because the light bulb's not on. Yeah, there we go. Let's see. This may, or, this may not work. Yeah, that's reflection. It's not going to work. All right, but for a brief moment, you can see that these are painted handprints over here. It's like okay. All right, I think, can you turn that one light on the right on? Yeah. Either switch. Oh. Okay, hold on, maybe. That's what I don't, it's, I'm always monkeying around with this thing to make it work better. I think I need to turn the light off. Just a second. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Just turn the light off, ladybug. Turn the ladybug light off. You guys are bossy. All right. I don't want light. We'll just try to turn it off. Okay, you're not going to see it as well as we'd like you to, but you can watch the video at home because it's going to look it's going to look good on the recording. All right. You are so positive. I know, right? Yeah, it's you're wrong. Okay, so what has, what maybe might be a criticism of this book in terms of it being utilitarian? Feathers. The feathers, yeah. So one of the things to think about is, you know, your materials. Feathers was probably not a great idea. Now, she managed to keep them intact while she was um, using them. So when you pick your materials, think about what um, you're going to use that's going to be going to hold up to wear. Because it's going to go in your backpack, and that's, nothing ruins a book quicker than putting in a backpack. In fact, I don't let my art history students take their books home because there's back and forth. I make them take their books home and leave them there because they're too heavy and they just get ruined in their backpacks. Now... What has she done that's creative here? Oh, we're going to look at the, the front. Do you know what? Those are not mirrors. You want to guess what those they're are? They're CDs. Yes. Okay. So, so she used CDs. What else did she do that's creative here? Yes. And she put her name as some of the fingers. Okay. She put her name as some of the fingers. Okay. So she's got Olivia, the middle finger. I don't know if that was intentional. But, and then... Probably not. I think she probably, it's space-wise. Maybe it was. I don't care. I, I, you know. just, don't, just don't show me your middle finger. That's all I don't want to see. Okay, and then she used her thumb here for Garcia. And then what did she do here? Her pinky is, she was in block one. 
So you oh. don't have to write block, but you do have to have, you're going to have to have four on yours. Because this quarter I have block one and block four for design. Oh, I like that oh, my yeah. That might have been Okay, and the other thing she's done that we can't see very well in the, um, on the screen is that she's used the same colors. Try to do some things. She's used the same image, hands, and she's used the purple in the background here is her handprint, and the orange that she used for her name and the number is the background here. So she's um, brought them together. Now, do any of you have a cover? that you've looked at, I didn't give you much time to talk about it, that you think is really well designed, that you think is interesting, that you want to pick up, that you want to see what's on the inside. No? Yes? I like that one, so I, um, why don't you bring that one up? Okay. Marston Hartley, you probably have never heard of, but he was a famous artist. Um, he lived um, during the, the beginning of the 20th century, during World War I. Um, and so what do you notice um, when you first look at this cover? What's so, interesting about this cover? Yes. Uh, it's got the right half of the face on it. Okay, it's got the right half of the face. So lots of times... It's what's missing is almost as interesting as what's there. So try to think about that. Sometimes a little bit of mystery um, draws our attention more than just in your face. You know, I am a, I see what you did. I'm a guy. All right. So the other thing I want to point out, and the, and the really good covers are going to be designed with the idea of both the front and the back. And... When I open this up and you see the whole book, okay, you see the other half of his face. So the back of it looks like this. All right. Now, um, another thing we're going to be talking about in art that's a very important that a lot of people don't think about is the background. A lot of people, um, a lot of students, I find this very typical, will say they'll do their object, they'll do a portrait or something, and then they'll say, I don't know what to put in the background. Um, and it's just as important what's in the background as the object itself. Because the background is going to tell us something about the object. They should relate, it should say something. So what do you notice about this background? It's light. It's light? It's light. What else? <laughs> it's barcoded, yes. Okay, good. <laughs> it's plain. Okay, it's pretty blank. It's pretty. Is it cheerful? Is it what? What kind of mood? It's kind of blank mood. It's kind of boring. Missing, a part, of, missing no. a part of his shoulder. Boring. Like, no, I think kind of boring. Um, what kind of texture is the background? Can you see that? Oh, you can't read it. It's a rough texture. If I hold it up like this. Yeah. You can see the texture. Okay, so if this this is probably a self-portrait, I assume it is. I don't know that for absolute sure, but it's I'm pretty sure. So what do we know about Marston Hartley, other than that he's a painter? He wears overalls. He likes himself. He likes himself? It is a picture of him, but does he look is it a happy picture? He's depressed. depressed. He's depressed. I agree. He's depressed. Look at his eyes. Look at his facial expression. He looks depressed. And then, why do you think he might be depressed? Say how to go to school. Because nobody likes his art. What did you say? Because nobody likes his art. Nobody likes his art. Okay. Now, how do you how do you read that? How do we know nobody likes his art? Because his, his, he drew himself, painted himself on the front cover. Yeah, and exactly. Right. Okay. Because they put a line down the middle. What about his, what about his social life? Didn't have one. Yes. He was probably like in the war, probably in like World War One. He was in, well, actually, I don't know if he was in World War One, but his partner was in World War One. He was gay. So um, that, you know, probably during that time period, it wasn't a good time to um, 
people were not accepted, but also his partner need to go. That's fine. Okay, have a good weekend. Adios. And I will have the rest of this lecture. It'll be on YouTube, so you can you can jump in where you looked up. Okay, so his partner was killed in the war. His partner fought in World War One and was killed. So notice how the background. What is it communicating? There's nobody there. There's nobody there. It's loneliness. Oh. All right. So these are the kind of things that I want you to understand about art. By the way, the artist paints the rough texture. It's not just the expression on the face, but the background can tell us a lot of things about um, whatever the artist is painting, whatever. So, so, so. Anyway, with your book, um, it should be. Um, not just any old design. Don't just, you don't want to just put a bunch of stripes on your book. Does anybody else have one that they want to share? Who else has a good one? This one's all right. Yes. Yes. Okay, here's one. Oh, my. <laughs> Look what's going on there. What? The guys get eaten by dragons. Yeah, that's right. It's Quetzalcoatl. It's a dragon. Quetzalcoatl. Okay. Quetzalcoatl. Yes. All right. So, what did the Aztecs? What do you know about the Aztecs? What did they believe? They trolled the world in one fell They believed in the sky god and many others. Right. They believed in the sun god, and in order to keep the sun god happy, because you want to have the sun, you need that for plants and. To stay alive, what did you have to do? Human sacrifices. Human sacrifices, yes. You had to keep them happy. So so we get a lot of information from this. Is this a realistic kind of drawing? Yes. Um not really. Yes. No, it's kind of it's kind it's of cartoonish, realistic. isn't it? All right. And there's a reason for that probably, but a lot of times the important thing is the message is there. We can see here that you know, there's human sacrifice. All of these things are symbols of their culture. Um, and so art in different um, um, places have different cultures. Now, all they've done here is repeated the cover. So maybe that's, you know, it could be, it's an interesting image for sure, um, but it could be a little bit more creative. Okay. So here's what you're going to do. Now, this is, this is back, I don't know, when I had your sister, <coughs> Brooke. <coughs> when I had sis, your sister, Brooke, she probably made a book like this. And it's called an accordion book. And we did something for lines, a composition for shape, a composition for form. And this, there's some really cool books. But, and I'll, I'll have to show because the video, <laughs> they're all they're seeing is the desk. So this person shows a computer, and uh, you see that? The first one is done with line, second one, shape, third one shows form, so it's three-dimensional, the fourth one, color, fifth one, value, and each time they had to show it in a different way, but they had to choose one kind of subject matter, so he chose computers. And they had to vary it and make it different each time. Each time the picture had to be different. So I, but I stopped doing this because when I got my students in other classes like painting class or advanced art, um, oh, these look like they have faces on them. See that? No, it's a bit. Ah, you guys can't see it. Let me see if I can. Oh, I'm so sorry. You'll have to watch the. Um, You'll have to watch the YouTube video. Right. Let's see if I can fit, make it better. Oh, there it goes. That's better. Anybody want to come over with me? Okay. You're going to have a YouTube party? Yeah. All right. So here's Rhythm. They've made it more abstract. Unity. Here, they did kind of a pointillism thing, if you know who Seurat is. Here's one where they made stamps for their pattern. Okay. So we're going to do, I want you to do a similar thing in your book, but we go into more depth now because I've learned I need to repeat these things more 
and I need to pound them into your head more. Uh, that sounds violent, but I don't mean it in, that, in a bad way. Oh, so they're using their brain. Because when I do that, my students learn more. And I've had other teachers tell me when they have them in their classes, the kids, I can really tell which, which, uh, who your students are because they understand a lot of things that other students that have not had your class understand. I know what I'm doing. I've okay, had a lot of practice. So um, you're going to pick something, and I'm not going to show all of these, but here's someone did a light bulb. That was their subject matter. And they just presented it in a whole lot of different ways. This person did a pear and grapes and presented it in a whole lot of different ways. So this person did portals. And so um, they, um, you know, here's a little house in a hillside. Here's a house, or I mean a doorway, I'm sorry. Here's a doorway in a house. Here's a doorway in a tree, a tree trunk. Um, where's the portal here? A window. A win is, yeah, is that a window there? Yeah. This is very creative. This is a doorway to hell. All right. Here's what a door inside a door inside a door. So very, very, this is very, very creative. Holly Hines, if any of you know her, she's at the University of Iowa now. So she's, she's still around. She's my Facebook friend. And so, what? You know her? Yeah. Well, you can tell her that I, I just, her, her book is awesome. You said my sister like two things in the school. Yeah, she was, she was an All-State student, so she was on the All-State team. She was awesome. Um, all right, bananas. This person did coffee cups. So it doesn't really matter what you do. It's what you do with it. This person did snails. <laughs> This person did bicycles. These are amazing. I'm showing you good examples. This person did apple. Yeah, and at the time they had to put elements on the front and principles on the back. I don't have you do that anymore, but um, this is another all stater. Um, did um, elements. He used an iron, like you iron your clothes. So, but did it very creatively. Here's an iron hanging down from who knows where with a cord, contrast, etc. Okay, here's an iron melting. How creative is that? Seriously. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Peace sign. All right. So, you're going to choose some kind of theme, and we'll talk about that in a second. But then, you're going to get a book. And the books are over here. Now, I used to just say, okay, design your cover. And I found what a lot of people did was just started doing stuff and they didn't know what they were doing. And so, where's my paper? It's hard for me to stay organized because I first I teach design and then I teach art history and now I'm back to design. Where's my paper? Can't find it. Somewhere over the rainbow? Yeah. Interesting, because I'll show you. I don't, okay. <laughs> I'll pretend like I'm doing this. You're going to get some of this cheap paper. All right? And you're going to pick a book. Here's my book. You're going to take the cover off. These are just library books that nobody reads, so they take cool. them. I know. There's some funny ones. They're not as funny because they've, we've, I've used so many of these now. Because I use what, about I have about 200 design students every year. So we use. One time a student said, "Yeah, I was working on my book in another class, and the teacher started yelling at me for writing in a library book." But these are withdrawn. Okay. And you might find one that you can already use. And there, if you want to use, if you wanted to use a blank book, I forgot to tell my morning classes, you can do that, but you'll have to get your own. So you can get a blank book if you want to, but a blank book is like you get a, um, a sketch pad or something. Um, 
you know, you can get it at an art store, you can get it, get it at Barnes and Noble. So if you want to, you can do that. One of the things I like about this, number one, it's good for the earth, right? Number two is that because you have to uh, make your images on pages that already have stuff on them, you don't have that fear of the blank page, um, which I think a lot of people have. So you're going to get your book, open it up. This is the exact same size of the one I had this morning. And then you're going to trace around it. You're going to pretend like this is a pencil. Trace, 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 trace. And then mark where the, where the spine is here and here. So you know, pick it up. All right, and then you're going to start designing your cover. So I'm just going to show, walk through, since I don't know where the paper is right now, I'll find some. some. I, um, I decided that my theme was going to be the sky. So that means I might use, in my book, I might use images of sun, clouds, stars, birds, rainbows, um, jet planes. Okay, so the sky was going to be my my basic theme. So the first thing I did was, you remember that the front's on the right and the back's over here. First thing I did was I wrote my name here, Gloria Zamolik, and I put one. And then, because I didn't really think, I just kind of just started doing it. And then, and then I'm going to do a rainbow. So I did the rainbow. Now this is not something that you're going to spend a lot of time on. This is a thumbnail sketch, is what we call them. This is planning it. This, this, you may change your design. I, I might even change it more when I go to do it. But this way, um, you have some idea what you're going to do. And that's really important to have some kind of plan. You may vary the plan. So after I did the rainbow, and notice I had it go all the way across, connecting the front and the back. Oh. So then, after I did that, I went, well, this doesn't make much sense, having my name this way. So I rewrote it and put it in some of the bands of the rainbow. And then I moved the number. I wasn't sure what. And then I had the back, and I thought, well, what am I going to do at the back? And so I thought, well, lots of times on the back of covers, there's a little blurb about the author, right? So why not write about myself? Gloria Zamolik, the author of this book, is the most amazing human being in the universe. All right? And so, um, you know, you got to love yourself before anybody else can love you. So why not? Just have fun with it. Think positive. That's the respect I want you guys to have for yourself. We all beat ourselves up. Everybody does it. Who thinks positive these days? Um, I do. So, you well, should, society being this bad. You should try because that's the only way things are going to be positive if you think that way. Sometimes I think I'm the worst teacher. Sometimes I think I'm the worst mother. Sometimes I would think I'm the worst friend. It usually depends on the day. Yep, it depends on the day. So today I'm feeling very positive. I am the most amazing human being in the universe. Okay, so you're going to do that. And then it would be very wise of you to get a helping hand. Have me look at your design and what you're doing, and um, then, you know, I can give you suggestions. After you're done with your book, you come up with this, I would probably say, well, the feathers, you know, so if you share your ideas with me ahead of time, then I can, I can help you more. All right, now I'm going to stop.